Hello and welcome to another entry in this series looking at games that never left the Amiga. Today we're looking at 18 Amiga exclusive driving games or racing games, whatever terminology you prefer. This isn't a complete list, I omitted some that I simply did not have the means to play and some that were just so shockingly bad. First up is Extreme Racing or XTR, developed by Siltana Software, published in 1995 by Blackmagic. The level designs in this game were clearly inspired by Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, but unlike Mario Kart, in Extreme Racing you're driving real cars. There are 8 characters with different cars, including sports cars, a pickup and a police car. Some of the characters are obvious rip-offs like this guy resembling Goku, and hilariously the policeman is called Rosa, which if you're watching from somewhere other than the UK is slang for the police here. The 12 tracks vary, featuring 6 types of terrain and scenery, with some having futuristic alien themes. Tracks will have hazards to avoid, like exploding barrels or pools of acid, and even random bystanders, and also often have shortcuts to take to shave off some valuable seconds. You'll also find those springboards that launch you into the air to clear gaps, like in Mario Kart, and those stomping blocks that rise and fall. The tracks can be quite punishing, more so than Mario Kart's. There are also power-ups and weapons of course, but they never manage to feel anywhere near as satisfying as they do in Mario Kart. Extreme Racing also has a plethora of options for you. There are several game modes, tournament mode in which you can spend your winnings on upgrades for your vehicle between races, and buy turbos. There are also 6 cups to compete in, with 3 speeds to select. It supports 4 person multiplayer racing as well as deathmatch. Just like its Muse Mario Kart, multiplayer is really where it's at. The manual even states that 8 players can race together if you link 2 Amigas. Fancy! There are also loads of visual settings you can play with including camera angles, and you can change the controls. In 1996 there was an upgrade to the game which added more tracks and even a track editor. I'm sure you'll agree the Mode 7 style graphics are pretty impressive for an Amiga game. You'll need a decent level of specs on your Amiga though, as it will look terrible on lower settings, so at least 2MB of RAM and an accelerator is preferable. Some reviewers even opted to give two separate review scores for this, one for stock Amiga 1200s and one for accelerated 1200s, so that says it all really. The soundtrack is a mix of dance music from techno to jungle. At the end of the day it's a worthy clone. It's no Mario Kart, mainly let down by the track design, but Extreme Racing is definitely one worth checking out. Roadkill was released in 1994, developed by Vision Software and published by Acid Software. This one also came to the CD32. A top-down racer set in the future, you compete in races against 8 opponents. You can ram your rivals into hazards like mines or spikes, shoot them, or shunt them into the side of the track to destroy them, which awards you a roadkill bonus. There are 6 cars to choose from, but they really only differ in appearance, and there are a measly 4 tracks. You need to place in the top 3 to progress to the next race, and you win prize money by doing so. To earn the big bucks, you'll need to complete bonus objectives, for example getting chains of roadkills. Once you've destroyed a certain number of cars, the jackpot prize becomes available. Destroy another car within the next few seconds and you'll be awarded a huge jackpot prize of $50 million. Obviously rivals can in turn damage your car and your health is shown at the bottom left to the right of the speedometer, starting at 4 bars. If damaged, you can enter the pit on any lap to repair the damage, but this costs valuable time. There are also health and armor replenishing pickups to collect, as well as other power ups and weaponry like speed boosts, rockets, and homing missiles. Active power ups are indicated in the blue squares to the right of the speedo. Roadkill controls very well indeed, with responsive controls. There's no brake, you just ease off of the accelerator if needed. The tracks have large arrows at corners indicating there's a turn, and trails of smaller yellow arrows leading up to a power up. There's a map at the bottom right with grey dots for opponents and a black dot for your car, but to be honest it's not very helpful. Each race also starts with a one lap practice, which is a nice touch allowing you to survey the track. You can turn this practice lap off in the settings if desired, as well as choose from three difficulty levels and select the number of laps per race. 
There's no in-game music except a fanfare when a bonus achievement is completed or activated, but it has some exceptionally good voice samples. Roadkill is all in all a really fun little game with some really clean and smooth graphics, well worth checking out. ATR All Terrain Racing was released in 1995, developed and published by Team 17. Again, this got a CD32 release which included some extra levels. I absolutely love this game's intro music composed by Alistair Brimble. The in-game music is less memorable, but very good. Another top-down racer, although this one's 2.5D. There are 42 tracks on varying terrain and 3 buggy types. There are arcade and league modes, and also a battle mode where you play multiplayer with weaponry like Micro Machines, where you get a point if sufficiently far in the lead. You have money to spend on upgrades with money earned by placing in the top 3. Much like Super Off-Road, you buy upgrades after each race to engine, acceleration, tyres and so on. And ATR has that same sense of achievement, leaving you wanting to upgrade your car more. You need to learn tracks so precisely, as there are so many tight turns that require a pinpoint accurate racing line. It makes it a bit frustrating and doesn't flow as well as other games in the genre. But after you've invested a bit of time into learning the tracks, it does get a bit easier and more satisfying. There are power-ups in the game as well, like a speed boost, which usually only serves to fling you at breakneck speed into the nearest wall. It's a decent game and has some lovely graphics with some nice little environmental details, but it can get a bit boring after a few tracks. Black Viper was developed by Light Shock Software and published by Neo Software in 1996. I don't think this got a dedicated CD32 release, but the CD version is compatible with the CD32. This had an interesting intro with a futuristic dystopian story, which actually took up an entire disc. The story starts in 2148, then jumps to 2166, which is when the game takes place. It's set after some devastating attacks on Earth have left the human race scrabbling for survival, and the planet scorched by radiation. It's not explicitly stated where these attacks originated, is it aliens? The only hope for humanity is a military vehicle known as Project Black Viper, which is a motorbike, obviously. This game is kinda like Super Hang On I suppose, but mixes in weaponry, so sort of like the driving sections of Technocop. Think Super Hang On meets Mad Max. You ride your bike on post-apocalyptic roads with futuristic cityscapes on the horizon and radiation burnt polluted skies. Levels are largely the same, with different scenery, for example desert resembling Monument Valley, but enemies and roads are always the same. You can also choose your route, outrun style. Your bike has forward facing guns with which you can shoot enemy vehicles, but watch out for innocent civilians driving on the road. Your weapon can get damaged and stop working, leaving you unarmed for the remainder of the level. You can buy and sell upgrades to your bike after each level, for example boosts and improved firepower, and there are also pickups in game like health. The left side of the screen shows the percentage of the level completed, and on the right you can see your bike's damage. If you reach 100% damage, it's destroyed. There are various control schemes depending on what you're using. You can map accelerate to up or a button and you have one button to fire and one to change weapon or map the change weapon to spacebar. Double pressing accelerate uses a boost. Controls aren't the best and it can be very difficult to avoid colliding with enemy vehicles, especially on curves. There are three difficulty settings. The music is decent and you can select from five music tracks at the start of the level. Visually it's not too bad, with the scenery being the best part of the graphics. The enemy vehicles can look a bit drab and colourless. A strange amalgamation of genres, but quite fun, at least for a short time. Bump and Burn was developed by Soft Eyes, published by Grand Slam in 1994. This also had a CD32 version. This is sort of like Mario Kart meets Wacky Races, 
the characters and respective vehicles have a quirky, wacky races vibe, but the game is nowhere near as enjoyable as Mario Kart, it's also not technically a kart racer. After I've said that, you should know what to expect from this. Race against opponents while picking up power-ups on the track by driving over these stars. Power-ups include weapons like 5 standard shots and a homing shot, stuff you can drop behind you to scupper opponents like an oil slick, mines, smokescreen or solid wall, and bonuses like speed boost, invulnerability, money or bump power which increases your ability to shunt opponents off the track. Money collected can be spent on upgrades in the shop to speed, tyres, acceleration and bump power. There are three speed modes but the lowest feels too slow really. Press fire to accelerate and push down to activate a weapon then up to fire. The current power up is shown at the bottom right. You must place in the top four in a race otherwise you'll need to use a continue and all of your vehicle stats will be demoted by one point. Nowhere on screen does it show your position or what lap you're on which I found quite annoying. It only shows this info when you finish a lap or when you're past or past a vehicle indicated by the toot of a horn. It would have been nice to have these on screen permanently. There's no in-game music sadly but overall has decent enough graphics and sound. Although this looks good visually it feels a bit soulless. Some of the levels are frustratingly hard to navigate, for example there's a volcano level that's extremely hard and precise with narrow bridges, jumps over canyons and pterodactyls taking you off track. At one point a pterodactyl dropped me into the path of another one immediately. These little niggles reduced bump and burn from a great game to just an okay one but it still had a lot going for it. If it was less frustrating in parts it would be a more enjoyable experience but at the end of the day it just lacks the thrill of games like Mario Kart. Also it has 6 discs and a horrendous amount of disc swapping and horrendous load times which is a killer unless you're playing on CD32 or WHD load. Flying High was a late release by Amiga Standards coming in 1997, developed by Pure Design and published by ACP and TCP. It's one of a rare breed of 3D driving games on the system and as a result it's a thirsty bitch requiring an Amiga 1200 with at least 6 megabytes of RAM. All the cars on the track look the same, this sort of buggy vehicle. There are 20 tracks set across 4 terrain types. You can also buy upgrades after races with your winnings on the usual tyres, engine and turbos and so on. This game is pretty awful. There's no real thrill to the driving but the worst offender is the appalling handling. When you consider what was available on PC and consoles by 1997, I mean Gran Turismo was released that year, this wasn't up to scratch. Seemingly there were patches released to address some of the issues like the handling but I can't see anything saving this. Highway Hawks was published by Anko in 1989, there was a rumoured Atari ST version that never materialised. This is in the same vein as Black Viper as you're driving down roads shooting at vehicles. It's very basic although bear in mind it is 1989, quite speedy though. You shoot cars and avoid lorries with the only aim being to reach the end of the road alive. Shooting awards cash which you can spend on upgrades you can buy and sell. Upgrades include weaponry like grenades, better tyres and grip. You can also earn cash by finishing quickly. You can even upgrade the car and buy a Firebird, Porsche or Ferrari. Your standard car is basically a family saloon in a lovely brown colour. Your car has limited fuel but you can collect more on the journey and also get extra ammo by shooting the lorries. There's no in-game music, you're hearing music from OutRun. It really is quite dull, actually in fairness it's not as bad as it looks but not much fun either. Virtual Karting was released in 1995, developed by Fabio Bizzetti and published by OTM. The footage you're seeing is Virtual Karting 2 released in 1998 as the first one isn't on my Amiga for some reason. Virtual Karting 2 is also an Amiga exclusive. The intro boasts fast and detailed texture mapping graphics at 50 frames per second on an unmodded Amiga 1200. It looks better on a CRT but still looks very odd like you're playing through a screen door. 
there are beginner, advanced and expert tracks. It has quite basic controls, accelerate, turn and pull down to brake. It's a very realistic simulation for the time and has impressive graphics for the Amiga. Although like many 3D games of that mid 90s era it hasn't aged terribly well, there's no denying it's an impressive achievement for the hardware. The 1995's leading lap MPV was developed by Kellyan, published by Black Legend. Well, I say published, but it was never officially published. It was a demo on the cover of CU Amiga, with the full game only available via mail order from CU Amiga, but seemingly the game was never finished. Does anyone know what MPV actually stands for here? I have no idea. Surely it's not multi-purpose vehicle. This is a straight up circuit racer with blocky 3D style graphics reminiscent of hard driving or 4D sports driving, or stunts if you're in North America. It has different characters to select with different strengths and weaknesses, as well as different cars with varying skill levels, for example Rally and Formula 1 cars. It's quite tricky staying on the tracks and the draw distance is pretty short, not much else to say about this one really. I'll stick to games like 4D Sports Driving, but for what is apparently an unfinished game it's not too bad at all. Another late release was 1997's Wheels on Fire, developed by Prolixity and published by Verkasoft. This was the first racer on the Amiga to use voxels, with the cars being 3D rendered bitmaps. If that doesn't excite you, good, it shouldn't. The cars, or buggies I suppose they are, look very odd as a result, and don't look like they're actually on the track, more superimposed onto it. The racing is very slow indeed. Your wheels will definitely not be on fire as the name suggests. There's a 15 track championship with courses offering varied weather conditions including snow which affects grip and fog which reduces visibility. You can buy upgrades to your vehicle between races and these menu screens are actually the nicest looking bit of the game. Sound isn't good either. There are frequent checkpoints which produce an annoying beep, and otherwise all you have is an engine sound and the equally annoying screeching of tyres. Not much entertainment in this one. F17 Challenge was developed by Holodream, published in 1993 by Team 17. This did come to the CD32, but only as part of a Holodream double pack bundled with Project X. This is a very arcadey F1 racer, not striving for any sense of realism like many of the sim racers on the Amiga. The graphics are nice and it's actually quite fast. Your car can get damaged quite easily as it can be hard to avoid other cars. Your damage percentage is shown at the top left, and when your car gets badly damaged its speed is significantly worse. 95% damage, good luck finishing the race in a lower gear very slowly. 100% damage and you're done, but you can enter the pits for repairs. There's an arcade mode in which you have to finish races in the top three, and normal mode where you collect points like a real Formula 1 season. You can select between automatic and manual gears, set the number of laps and difficulty. There are several tracks from around the world and different weather conditions, although I think this is just a visual effect as you can't notice any other differences. Looks quite nice, but it's sadly quite boring, despite having a good sense of speed, just missing something. Prime Mover is another super hang-on wannabe, released in 1993. This was developed by Interactivision, published by Psygnosis. The game features nine races from which to choose, with seven on track during a race and five different bikes with different handling and stats. There are 12 tracks from around the globe, each introduced with its country's respective national anthem. Default controls are up to accelerate and buttons to change gear. Better to change this around, or even better set the gears to automatic. Auto is far easier, but takes a fair bit longer to reach top speed. It handles very well actually, and feels very arcadey and has a really decent sense of speed to it. The game gets very fast when up in the 5th and 6th gears. A welcome feature is the practice mode where you can learn the tracks. There's no in-game music but has very cool intro music and the graphics are pretty good too. 
it's pretty fun and I'd say of all the motorbike games on this list it's the most faithful to the good arcade motorbike racers and controls the best. If you're looking for a smooth arcade motorbike racer on the Amiga, you can't really go wrong with Prime Mover. Max Rally was released very late in 1998, developed and published by Fortress. This is undoubtedly one of the best looking games on the list because it's stuck with the Amiga's strengths, i.e. 2D, rather than going for 3D graphics as most games of that era did. The result is a lovely looking top down racer akin to Micro Machines. The character select menu has a Bitmap Brothers vibe and the in-game graphics remind me of some of the graphically stronger Amiga games like Cannon Fodder. Thankfully there's a decent bit of gameplay to accompany the good looks. It's a fun little game especially in multiplayer. There are 20 tracks across varied terrain including a cosmic sci-fi theme and several game modes. It supports split screen multiplayer for two or four players in a Micro Machine style race where the player lagging behind gets eliminated. There's also a challenge mode in which the screen scrolls automatically requiring that you keep up. This can be made trickier with switches to press and moving platforms as you can see here. The speed of the cars is in my opinion perfectly matched to the perspective and layout of the tracks which can be a difficult thing to get just right. Max Rally is one of the few late release Amiga races here that's actually really worth playing. Boss Car was released in 1996 by Club 21. Does the boss at the start refer to something? I don't know, but it should be short for bollocks. This game is mental, I really don't know what they were thinking with this. At face value it actually doesn't look terrible, but once you start playing, you're faced with some very bizarre design choices and even worse gameplay. The first oddity is that the camera doesn't stay fixed behind the car, so when the car turns left or right you're looking at the side of the car, the car turns toward the camera you're looking at its bonnet, so weird. It gets worse when you try to steer and realise that the handling is some of the worst ever and that's even disregarding the delay the car has in actually doing what you tell it to. Perhaps the boss is actually an acronym for barely operable steering, avoid at all costs. An early one here Brands Hatch released in 1988 and published by Diamond Games. This is a very simple top down racer presented as single screen tracks of which there are 10. Interestingly despite being named after Brands Hatch, none of the tracks resemble it and actually it would be too detailed to include on such a small screen anyway. This is pretty much as basic as they come, the only appeal is in two player mode and even then there's little on offer. The sound effects are so primitive they actually remind me of the kind of sound effects you'd get on a BBC Micro game. Champion Driver was released in 1991, developed and published by Idea Software. It's a top down racer like a poor man's super sprint but more zoomed into the track, kind of like micro machines or supercars in terms of field of view. There are five different types of car which are in order of speed Formula Car, Sport Rally, F3, Sport Prototype and F1. Progress through these disciplines as you get better and learn the tracks along the way. There are a whopping 50 tracks. After races you can buy upgrades with your winnings including engine upgrades, tyres for different weather conditions and nitros. Your car has limited fuel so you need to pit to refuel and you can take damage. Take too much damage and you'll blow up which is far too easy to do at the faster disciplines. F1 is very fast indeed so even without nitros it's a nightmare staying on the track. I prefer the slower car types. I feel like the speed to perspective ratio that I was just talking about with Max Rally makes this game harder than it needs to be. Not bad, but I can't see it having much long term appeal. A Thousand CC Turbo is another motorbike racer that clearly drew inspiration from Super Hang On. This was published by Impressions in 1990. Options and content are very limited here. You select one of four bikes and this selection determines which track you'll be racing on. 
Then you choose how many laps you want to race, up to 9. But then that's it. If you crash 3 times, it's game over. And if you win, it's game over. Either way, you're headed back to the main menu screen. Having the consequences of 3 crashes be game over is just ridiculous, and you will crash. There are imperfections in the road that are almost impossible to avoid hitting. You also have to choose between music and sound effects. The only similarities to Super Hang On are in spirit, because in reality the handling and gameplay are shockingly bad, and the graphics leave a lot to be desired. Three D racers don't have much of a reputation on the Amiga, but if one was ever going to wow you, then it's Virtual GP. This was released in 1999, created by Paolo Catani and published by Islona. As you can probably tell by looking at it, this one requires a seriously beefed up Amiga to run. I believe this started as a tech demo, but was made into a full game. The menu screens and images are very impressive, and the game itself looks like something you might have found on a PC in the mid 90s. The game is based on the 1998 F1 season, and features 16 tracks. I'm probably not the best person to comment on this game as I was never really a fan of Formula 1 games, nor sim races for that matter, but this seems to be a very realistic game. Too realistic for me. The cars are very hard to drive indeed, which I suppose in itself is realistic. There are several settings you can switch on that will help you somewhat and make driving a tad more forgiving. There are also myriad settings to tune your car, should that be your kind of thing. Obviously there are better races out there on other systems by 1999, but it would be hard to argue against Virtual GP being very impressive on the Amiga. So that was 18 of the Amiga's exclusive driving games. Let me know if any of these tickle your fancy, or just let me know what your favourite races are in general on the Amiga. Thanks for watching. You can catch the rest of this Amiga exclusive series as it progresses in this playlist.